Office of Change for St. Louis. Professional photographer has been hired to take photos of all the graduates. We ask you to turn off your cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please rise for the processional and remain standing for the invitation. Thank you.
Good morning. Let us pray. God of many names, we gather today in recognition of the fulfillment of the hopes and dreams of our graduates to educate their minds and deepen their characters. They come to this moment with stories of challenge and of triumph. Regardless of their journey, help them to realize that they come to this moment of success because with perseverance, all things are possible. Help them to remember that who they have become is a reflection of your love and the love of those who have nurtured and cared for them along the way. May all they have learned about life at Rockford University empower them as they enter an ever-changing world that requires their skills, their adaptability, and their vision for a future they and we have not anticipated. May the words of their mentors dispel the darkness of confusion in their hearts on their toughest days and echo in their souls as they celebrate their victories in life. Foster in all of us a lifelong thirst for learning and protect us from the arrogance of believing we have ever learned enough. In a time where too often violence is a response to conflict, keep us ever mindful that we now share in the legacy of Jane Addams to be instruments of peace and unity in the toughest of times. Give us the courage and strength to live fully our values so that the gifts you have given us will be used for the good of all humankind. We ask your blessings upon our graduates today as we now weave the shining threads of our newest alumni into the rich tapestry of Rockford University. Be with us this day and all days. Amen. Please remain standing as the Vocal Collective leads us in the singing of our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Good morning. My name is Joel Moore, Chair of the Rockford University Board of Trustees. On behalf of the entire Rockford University Board, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to our 167th commencement ceremony. Graduates, much hard work has been done accomplished in order for you to be here on this special day. Now it's time, take a deep breath, a big smile, take a moment to mark this occasion in your mind. It is indeed your time to be proud. Parents and friends, thank you for your support of these remarkable students. Your contribution to their success should also be celebrated. Along with your family and friends, the Rockford University family is proud of you too. We offer our collective and sincere congratulations to our graduates today. And now, it is my privilege to introduce Dr. Eric Folkemer, the 18th president of Rockford University. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Moore. And thank you for being here to help us celebrate this momentous day. Thank you to Professors Elaine Sharp and Tim Adams 
bagpiper Aaron Kerr, and the Rockford area brass quintet for contributing to our ceremony with words of inspiration and beautiful music. Joining me on the stage are Elaine Sharp, Associate Professor of Psychology and Faculty Chair, who provided the invocation. Chair of the Board of Trustees, Joel Moore, who introduced me. Our commencement speaker, Molly Barker, founder of Girls on the Run. Dr. Michael Perry, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Kimberly McCullough, Nursing Department Chair and Assistant Professor, who will be distributing pens to our nursing students. It is customary at our commencement ceremonies to honor retiring faculty members that have met certain requirements by conferring upon them faculty emeritus status. Dr. Perry. It is my honor to recognize Dr. Lynn Newhart with the status of Professor Emeritus of Sociology. Dr. Newhart earned this honor in May of 2020, but we were unable to celebrate at that time. Lynn was a blues singer, performed at gigs at small venues. She really enjoys spending a lot of time with her grandson, Corbin, son, son of her daughter, Meg, who is an RU alum. Students described her, as teach, her teaching as entertaining, informative, and engaging. And she was passionate about her students getting the best training and experience possible when they worked on their degrees. She was also instrumental in building the criminal justice track within the sociology department and turned out many excellent law enforcement professionals. Unfortunately, Professor Newhart is unable to be here today, but we are grateful for her 25 years of service and we thank her. Today, we welcome Molly Barker to provide our commencement address. An accomplished triathlete, Molly Barker encourages others to run toward hope, passion, and self-discovery to solve problems and overcome adversity. With a background in social work, counseling, and teaching, she is the founder of two rapidly growing nonprofit organizations. Since 1996, Girls on the Run has helped more than two million girls across the country unleash their potential. And since 2014, the Red Boot Coalition has provided space for honest sharing and compassionate listening that changes how we see and engage with our world. A positive role model for people of all ages, Molly shares life-changing lessons from her personal journey to inspire all of us to embrace our individual strengths, realize our potential, and live life outside the box. Please join me in welcoming our commencement speaker, Molly Barker, to the podium. Good morning, or as we say from where I'm from in North Carolina, hey, and a special hey y'all to all y'all who invited me to spend time with you on this very sacred and special day. Dr. Folcomer, trustees, distinguished professors, parents, family, alumni, and staff, thank you. And to the rest of you, the students, you're here, you made it. Congratulations to the 2021 graduates of Rockford University. And it's okay to clap for yourselves at this very moment. A few housekeeping items before I begin. One, the likelihood of your remembering this speech is pretty slim. This is a fact, there is no shame in this either. It is just how these commencement ceremonies seem to play out. So to give ourselves a fighting chance of remembering something, I wanna start right out of the gate with an awkward moment of silence. Yep, look around, take note, observe the sky, where your hat is on your head, who is the person sitting next to you, the sounds around you, and then I want you to name it. Mark this moment with a name, a word, or a memory. 
I will do that too. So here it goes. Let's do this. Great. This little exercise leads quite nicely into my first message of the day. Life is fast. We are all conditioned to do and then do and then do some more. Busyness is often worn as a badge of honor. Our addiction to social media only amplifies this. But busyness keeps us from asking big questions like, why am I busy? What am I doing? What life do I want? Is this fair? Is this just? Is this healthy? So first, thing, first things first, takeaway number one, resist that unnecessary sense of urgency. Slow down, breathe, and get still every once in a while. And then there's the second housekeeping item. I'm an innovator. This means I make stuff up. I see things that other people don't see yet. It also means I've written down these words and I'm reading them, but I may not end up following them. As a matter of fact, I've created a beautiful life not following the script. And so I'm giving you fair warning that I may at any time slip off into something else, or I may not. It's the fun in not knowing. And so that takes me to my second message. With anything that you do, start with a few bullet points and maybe even write them down in pen, but write everything else in pencil. Because what you are certain of today may or might, may not be what you are certain of tomorrow. For example, if you told me in 1993 when I was deep into my alcohol and drug addiction that I'd be standing here in Rockford, Illinois, delivering this commencement address, I simply couldn't have believed it. But then again, that's the miracle of pencils. The third housekeeping item has to do with why I'm here. The obvious reason I'm here is because of the work I've done. I am the founder of Girls on the Run International. I founded the Running and Life Skills program for third to eighth grade girls in 1996, or as the kids in the program would say, the light, late 1900s. Which rather humorously reminds me of Madison, a fourth grader in Grand Rapids, Michigan, who for Women's History Month beautifully penned my entire life into a 300-word essay, the last sentence of which read, and I'm happy to share that the founder of Girls on the Run, Molly Barker, is still alive. <laughs> but outside of the big reason I'm here is the less obvious reason I'm here. The one that I find way more intriguing, the less obvious one is always the one that makes the bigger difference, which segues into my third message of the day. The big things in life don't usually happen during the big things. They tend to occur in the more subtle, mundane, and intimate moments, like during a sunrise, while out on a run, talking with a friend, or swinging in a hammock. I know this because it's everything to do with this next story that begins in 1970, the year I turned 10, and the year my mom got sober. Life before her sobriety was tough. I'm not going to go into the details, but let's just say I'm still working through some of the trauma from those early childhood experiences. But when she did get sober, things got a lot better. She went back to get her college degree. She started writing poetry, practicing yoga, meditating, and she also started running. Now this may not seem like a big deal, but in 1970, in the Deep South, women were wives and mothers. The options were frankly pretty limited. So when my mom ran six miles before sunrise, decked out in short shorts, a button-down shirt, and her sneakers, she was radical, revolutionary, courageously deviating from the norm. She would come back ready to start the day, sweating, happier, and a fuller, more real version of herself than I had ever known. A few years later, when I was about 14, she asked me if I'd like to join her on one of those runs, and so I did. And the one morning turned into another morning, and another. And before you know it, the two of us were training for 10Ks together. But that wasn't why we ran. It was the other stuff. 
you know, the real stuff, the sound of our breath in sync with one another, the sunrise, the birds, our feet in unison on the pavement, the connection both to ourselves and to our divine. Ironically, it was about that same time I started drinking. 14 is 14. Trying to fit in became really important. And so when Elizabeth, the rich, pretty, and popular girl, invited me to her house for a sleepover, I accepted. And two hours after my arrival, and too many rums and cokes later, I called Tony Baynard and told him I loved him. Before the call, Tony didn't give me the time of day. But after that call, everything changed. At last, I had made it. The problem is the real me hadn't gone anywhere. She emerged every morning when I ran with my mom, unencumbered by the messages out there that told me my worth was measured by my looks, the approval of others, and being the nice but not too nice girl. The real me was strong, smart, compassionate, funny, and powerful. For years, these two me's, the real one and the one that desperately wanted to fit in, seemed to be in conflict with each other. And so drinking numbed the edges, quieted the conflict, fooled, me and, fooled the me that wasn't real into believing I was. So it's no surprise that on July 6, 1993, a couple of years after completing my third Ironman triathlon, I hit bottom. The alcoholism finally won. I called my sister Emily, and she listened. She didn't try to fix, save, or rescue me from the dark despair of myself. She listened with an unshakable love. And then when I was done, she said, this too shall pass, Molly. Go to sleep and see how you feel in the morning. And so I did. The next day, July 7th, 1993, I set off on my afternoon run. Nothing extraordinary here, just a run. Something I did every day despite my addiction. And then about three miles in, as a thunderstorm approached, its wind, lightning, and thunder all around me, I had an experience. And I don't know how to say this without sounding absolutely insane. I shattered into a million little pieces. And for a brief moment, I'm not even sure how long, I was nothing, no thing. I wasn't an alcoholic. I wasn't a woman. I wasn't poor or rich or divorced or small. I just was. And I realized in that sliver of a moment that for 32 years of my life, I'd have been allowing the out there words and stories to define the in here me, the undefinable, the spirit that lives in me and you. And so I made a decision to no longer allow other people and the systems that contain them to choose the words, the definitions, and the narratives for me, but instead to choose those words and narratives for myself. The words and narratives that honor, celebrate, and give power to the untamed and undefinable in all of us. And so three years later, I started Girls on the Run to give girls the tools to do that too, to define their worth on their own terms, to claim their own truths and write their own stories. There's a lot we could say about this story, overcoming addiction, following your passion, coloring outside the lines. But today, my takeaway from all of this is this. It's in the mundane, the ordinary, and the simple events of life, like a run during a thunderstorm where the really big things happen usually by surprise. It could be happening for one of you right now. The key is to notice. And now a different story. I think it was my sixth year of coaching girls on the run when I met Nakia. It was her first time in the program and I was leading the girls through our introductions. As we moved around the circle, each girl shared a word or two. We finally arrived at Nakia, who lowered her head, didn't respond, and refused to make eye contact. One of the other girls said, oh, that's just Nakia, she never talks. And I looked at her and I said, Nakia, you are welcome here. And we continued on around the circle. During the lesson, Nakia was clearly unsettled. 
So I asked the assistant coach to take the lead as Nakia and I stood off to the side for the remainder of the lesson. The following day, I met with a school social worker and she shared with me that Nakia was new to the school. She was also new to foster care and little was known about her birth family other than the severe abuse and neglect she had experienced there. Over the course of the program, Nakia, although still silent, began to engage more deeply, to exude a new level of confidence. On the very last day of the program, at the end of our final lesson, I circled the girls up and asked them, hey, so tell me, what is one word to describe your girls on the run experience? And one by one, the kids began to share hope, courage, power, friendship. And then we came around to Nakia, who took in a deep breath and looked to each of the girls on her team. And then she just exhaled. The following day, we had our end of season awards banquet. We were meeting at the school cafeteria, enjoying pizza and celebrating the girls. And after several minutes, it was finally time for our award ceremony. And one by one, I called up each girl and gave her a special award. Jasmine won the Sweat Goddess Award. Catherine won the Supporter Friends Award. And after nearly every girl had received her award, I called up Nakia. Slowly, she approached the front of the room. I looked at her and said, Nakia, I give you the Grand Communicator Award because you communicate in ways that many adults have forgotten. You communicate with the smile on your face, the sparkle in your eye, and the powerful way you move across the track when you run. We stood there for a moment, just the two of us, despite being in a room full of people, and then Nakia slowly reached into her back pocket and pulled out a card. She held the card for a moment or two, looked up at me, and then she looked back at the card. And then she looked up at me and then back at the card. And then there's that moment, you know, when you just have to take the leap, step out from behind the fear, do the thing, take the action, speak the truth, tell your story, own up to it, be it, do it, say it. And Nakia read the words on her card out loud for everyone there in the cafeteria at Beverly Woods Elementary. Dear Molly, the word I wanted to say at Girls on the Run yesterday was loved. I felt loved. Now, admittedly, there's a slew of different messages in this story. Celebration, courage, overcoming adversity, strength, using your voice. But the one I'd like to share with you today is the more subtle one, and it's this. You will know when you know. This will show up in lots of different ways throughout your life, whether to take the job or not take it, whether to get married or not get married, whether to speak the truth or stay quiet, whether to be complicit or take action, whether to stay with him or leave. You are very likely sitting right now with a decision just like that. And just like Nakia did, I implore you to trust that you will know what to do when you need to do it. That moment of knowing may take a while, but it always comes, always. And knowing that it always comes allows you to sit in the discomfort and mess messiness of uncertainty, which is a huge, huge part of living. Which leads me to my final story. It was a cloudy and cold day, much like this one, and the last time I'd meet with my Girls on the Run team at Charlotte Country Day School. I was walking a lap with nine-year-old Madeline. We walked for a few steps in silence, and then I asked, how is it, Madeline, that you and I ended up together? You know, like right now at this moment, there's millions of people in the world. How did that happen? And Madeline, all fourth grade of her, paused for a second. And then she began, well, you see, Molly, it's like this. Now, she uses the word God, and so that's the word I'm going to use, but I invite you to use whatever word works for you, spirit, higher power, universe, fate. She says, well, you see, Molly, it's like this. God has an idea, but he has a problem. He needs to get the idea down to earth. 
So he wraps a body around the idea, and then he sends it here to be born. Now, since the idea inside of all of us is really big and really bold, it takes lots of bodies to come together to get the really big idea out. And that is, of course, Molly, how you get your gifts and talents. They are God's tools to help you get the big idea from inside of your body out before your body dies. That is what she said. And I can remember being so stunned by her response that I literally saw in flashing neon lights on the back of my eyelids, what prophet art thou, small child? But here's the deal. Madeline nailed it. And if I could tell my younger self what I know now, it would be this. There are these truly magical moments when everything comes together, where all your gifts, talents, and stories just slide into one perfect moment of being, where your worth, your pain, your struggles and despair all make sense. And here's the thing, you can't always know when that will happen. These intersections just do. But over time, you see, if you pay attention, you begin to see the patterns there and the practices that make the magic happen. And then the best part is, you get to make the magic happen rather than wait for it. So my new friends, be vigilant with your own precious life. Slow down, go off script, look for the big things in the small moments, trust that you will know when you know, and stay alert to the patterns and practices that lead to those magical moments of intersection when everything just makes sense. Congratulations and thank you for having me. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue. Blessed day, the dark, sacred night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I hear babies cry, I watch them grow, they'll learn much more than I'll ever know, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Thank you.
Thank you, Vocal Collective, and thank you, Molly, for a great message. Take this off. Um, Rockford University is one of 11 institutions in the state of Illinois that houses a Phi Beta Kappa chapter and one of only 290 chapters in the country. The prestigious Phi Beta Kappa Society, the nation's oldest and largest academic honor society, was founded on December 5, 1776 by five students at the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. Since then, Phi Beta Kappa has evolved to become the nation's leading advocate for the liberal arts and sciences at the undergraduate level. The society's distinctive emblem, a golden key, is widely recognized as a symbol of academic achievement. Our, university, our Rockford University chapter was started under the presidency of Mary Ashby Cheek in 1953. Each year, we recognize a graduating Phi Beta Kappa member who has the highest cumulative grade point average. This year's recipient of the 2021 Phi Beta Kappa Prize is Crystal Bailing. Now, Crystal is participating in our afternoon commencement ceremony, and we, pre we will present her with the award at that time. It is now my great pleasure to present the 2021 candidates for degrees. Candidates, on behalf of the faculty, I congratulate each of you on your successful completion of your program of study. May you continue to build upon the record of achievement that has brought you here today, guided always by the knowledge and values imparted to you by the faculty and staff of Rockford University, as you cross the stage, you will be congratulated by President Fulcomer. Due to the health and safety guidelines we have in place, President Fulcomer will hand you your diploma cover but will not shake your hand. And do pay attention if it's slippery, if the rain starts. I just, that does not on the script, but I noticed that earlier. So um, those graduates receiving the degree of Bachelor in Science and Nursing will also receive their nursing pin from Dr. Kim McCullough, Chair of the Nursing Program. The nursing pin has a long history dating back more than 1,000 years. The legacy of Florence Nightingale has influenced modern day pinning ceremonies. Today the nursing pin is a symbolic welcoming of newly graduated nurses into the nursing profession. It is about honoring these students and their journey to become a nurse. The pin recognizes the hard work that was put into completing the educational requirements that enable graduates to take their state licensing examinations and to begin caring for patients as a nurse. Traditionally, a ceremony, a pinning ceremony, is held prior to commencement. We were unable to hold it this year due to COVID-19 restrictions, so the nurse pinning is being incorporated into our commencement ceremony. As graduates exit the stage, Director of Alumni Engagement and Philanthro Philanthropic Strategies, Nicole Riley, will present you with a gift from the Alumni Association and greet you as the newest alumni of Rockford University. Are you all ready? Yeah? Okay. Degree candidates, in the first row, please rise and come forward. Yep, that's perfect. Brett Michael Down, Master of Business Administration, Finance. Zachary Nathan Frolic, Bachelor of Science in Kines Kinesiology, Exercise Science, Magna Cum Laude. 
Christian Garcia, Bachelor of Science, Kinesiology, Sport Management. Clayton Matthew Goodwin, Bachelor of Science, Political Science, Cum Laude. Justin Paul Hallberg, Bachelor of Science, Kinesiology, Sport Management, Summa Cum Laude. Philip J. Highland, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Carrick Matthew Jones, Bachelor of Science, Kinesiology, Sport Management. Caleb William Randolph, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Finance, Summa Cum Laude. Jake Charles Smolinger, Bachelor of Science, Chris Criminal Justice. Joseph Mario Valdez, Master of Business Administration, Business Administration, Healthcare Administration. Christian Taylor Percy, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Management, Magna Cum Laude. Logan Sean Street, Bachelor of Science, Kinesiology, Sports Management, McLeish Scholar. McCatherin Grace Andrew, Bachelor of Science, Computer Science, Management Information Systems, Summa Cum Laude. Emily Lynn Ashens, Bachelor of Science, Elementary Education, Cum Laude. Isa Askerbeck Ulu, Master of Business Administration, Business Administration, Finance. Aaron Ann Babler, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing, Cum Laude. Jeffrey J. Excuse me for a moment, things are blowing. <laughs> Jeffrey J. Ballard, Bachelor of Science in Management Studies, Management Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Michaela Marie Borja, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Mary Margaret Boyce, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Brianna Carlson, Bachelor of Arts, double major in Studio Art and Art History. Alonso Carrillo, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, CPA, Cum Laude. Kimberly A. Clark, Bachelor of Science, Science Elementary Education. Nicholas Joseph Corgan, Master of Business Administration, Business Administration, Finance. Taylor May Covert, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Amanda Elaine Davis, Bachelor of Science in Management Studies, Management Studies. Jack Del Rio, Bachelor of Science Accounting, Cum Laude. Alexis K. Denton, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing, Cum Laude. Haley Marie Drew, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Tanner Earl Elliott, Bachelor of Science, Criminal Justice, Magna Cum Laude. Altenia Urkemebova, Master of Business Administration, Business Administration, Finance.
Melissa Flores, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing Cum Laude. Daniel Alejandro Gonzalez, Master of Business Administration, Business Administration. James Gorski, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Management, Cum Laude. Adam Hagedorn, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Theater, Acting, Directing, Magna Cum Laude. Caitlin Marie Hare, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Abdul Latif Omar M. Hawassi, Bachelor of Nursing and Nurse, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Carlisle Lynn Heider, Bachelor of Science, Kinesiology, Teaching, McLeish Scholar. Fatima al Sahra Imrabhim Hussein, Bachelor of Arts, English. Ina Karina Igarta, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Allison Ann Kaiser, Bachelor of Science, Elementary Education, Cum Laude. Destiny Lynn Kelsey, Bachelor of Science Education, Non-Licensure. Michael Kissel, Bachelor of Science Biology, Biomedical Sciences. Alexander Klayich, Bachelor of Science, Computer Science, Management Information Systems. Carson Lauren Nodal, Bachelor of Science in Management Studies, Management Studies. Gabrielle Luis Camprud, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Paige Olivia Corsan, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Leia Kova Lea Kovalik, Bachelor of Arts, Human Development, Child and Adolescent Development, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Amber Leigh Kraus, Bachelor of Science, Human Development, Child and Adolescent Development. Chelsea Rose Kreiser, Master of Business Administration, Business Administration. Brittany Cheyenne Crishol, Master of Arts in Teaching, K-12 Education. N Natalie, Natalia. Natalia Anna, thank you. <laughs> Let me start over. Natalia Anna Kacharsik, Bachelor of Science, Biology, Cellular and Molecular Biology, Honors Program in Liberal Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Emily Rose Canoes, Master, Master of Arts in Teaching, Elementary Education. <laughs> Stephanie Michelle Lamb, Master of Arts in Teaching, K-12 Education. <laughs> Kelly Stephanie Lansadel, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Kenneth Thomas Dwight Lauderdale, Bachelor of Science Accounting. Max Robert Lee, Bachelor of Arts, English, McLeish Scholar. Samantha Janelle Lee, Bachelor of Science Accounting, CPA, Cum Laude. Jordan Alexis Leet, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing, Cum Laude. Jacob Robert Lickleader, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, ACS, Magna Cum Laude. 
Ruby Tuesday Man, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Bianca Martinez Franco, Bachelor of Arts, double major in English and Spanish. Brooke Ann Mendez, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Griselda Ruby Mendoza, Master of Arts in Teaching, K-12 Education. Yaya Ali Mubarki, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry. Madison Augusta Moore, Bachelor of Science, Early Childhood Education, Magna Cum Laude. Maria Synthony Nagai, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, Summa Cum Laude. Sorry. Alexis Renee Olson, Master of Business Administration, Business Administration, Project Management. Cassandra J. Joyner Patterson, Bachelor of Science, Human Development, Child and Adolescent Development. Vanessa Antonia Peoples, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Alexander Paneshi, Bachelor of Science, Biology, Cellular and Molecular Biology, McLeish Scholar. Jonathan Nathaniel Porter, Master of Arts in Teaching, K-12 Education. Kionis, or Francis Raquel Kionis, Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry. Diana Resendiv Silva, Bachelor of Arts, Elementary Education, McLeish Scholar. Anne Marie Reese, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. David Joseph Rylot, Master of Arts in Teaching, K 12 Education. Morgan Jane Robb, Bachelor of Science, Early Childhood Education, McLeish Scholar. Yvette Charlotte Robinson, Master of Business Administration, Business Administration, Healthcare Administration. Sarah, Sarah Rodenbeck, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Finance, Cum Laude. <laughs> Abigail Lynn Roderick, Bachelor of Science, Kinesiology, Exercise Science, Magna Cum Laude. Danielle Maine Rosensteel, Bachelor of Science, Elementary Education, Magna Cum Laude. Antonia Rowe, Master of Business Administration, Business Administration, Project Management. <laughs> Mariana Anthea Ruggiero, Master of Education, Urban Education. Sammy Russell, Bachelor of Science, Elementary Education, Magna Cum Laude. Tina Renee Sanders, Bachelor of Science, Biology, Biomedical Sciences. Omar Alexander Salters, Master of Business Administration, Business Administration, Project Management. Jesse, Jesse Jordan Skiro, Bachelor of Science in Management Studies, Management Studies. Michaela Marie C, Bachelor of Science, Human Development, Child and Adolescent Development. Anna Seahaver, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Shelby M. Cedar, Bachelor of Science, Middle Grades Education, Cum Laude.
Kevante I. Shaw, Bachelor of Science, Kinesiology, Exercise Science. Jessica Lynn Slattery, Bachelor of Science, Elementary Education, Summa Cum Laude. Tony Suyavong, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, CPA, McLeish Scholar. Michaela Jalen Spanbauer, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Paige Marie Springer, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. Joe E. Stout III, Bachelor of Science, Kinesiology, Teaching. Carol R. Carol All Suzol, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology, Bachelor of Science, Political Science, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. <laughs> Alicia K. Tartagali, Tartaglia, Tartaglia. See, this is great when you just tell me what it is because I'm right here. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Biology, Cellular and, Mo and Molecular Biology, Cum Laude. <laughs> Hannah Marie Timmer, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Nursing. <laughs> Alina Lynn Wagner, Bachelor of Science, Biology, Cellular and Michael, Molecular Biology, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Honors Program in Liberal Arts and Sciences. It is a tradition at Rockford University that a degree candidate may receive his or her diploma from an employee or trustee of the university who is a relative. Helping present Riley's diploma is her mother, Kimberly Wagner, Associate Professor of Education and Chair of the Education Department. Is she up here? Okay. Riley Elise Wagner, Bachelor of Science, Early Childhood Education, Cum Laude. I didn't see her. <laughs> Jacob Waymeyer, Bachelor of Science, Kinesiology, Teaching, Magna Cum Laude. Kylie Michelle Wells, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, CPA, Magna Cum Laude. Bridget Nicole Williams Johnson, Bachelor of Business Administration, Business Administration, Project Management. Raven Sheridan Zachary, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Art, Two Dimensional Art, Cum Laude. Letting everyone get back to their seats. <laughs> okay. All right. Degree degree candidates. Please stand. Dr. Folkemer, for those candidates who have fulfilled all academic requirements after examination of their academic records and upon recommendation of the faculty, I recommend that these candidates be awarded one of the following degrees, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science and Management Studies, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Business Administration, and Master of Education. Upon the recommendation of the university faculty, 
and by the authority vested in me by the Rockford University Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you one of the following degrees. Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Management Studies, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Master of Art in Teaching, Master of Business Administration, and Master of Education, with all of the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining, and welcome you to the honorable company of educated women and men. Congratulations. You may be seated. At this time, I would like to introduce Student Government Association President Tanner Elliott, who will present a message on behalf of our graduates today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Tanner Elliott. Good morning. I'm incredibly grateful to stand before you today and to deliver these remarks. For those who do not know me, I am Tanner Elliott, and I am the student government president. I have had the honor to serve this university and its students for the last three years as class senator, vice president, and finally president. I've also had the pleasure to stand alongside of you all as a leader, a student, and a friend. Attending Rockford University has been one of the greatest pleasures of my life, and I am forever thankful for the professors, friends, and colleagues that I have learned and worked with over the last four years. I hope you all take away meaningful lessons and friendships that you'll carry with you for the rest of your life. But just in case you haven't heard enough lectures in your time here, let me give you one final speech. From today on, we will be known as graduates of the class of 2021. That is a title that we have all worked incredibly hard for, and it is a title that has not come easy. We were born into a fast-paced and changing world. We have witnessed the world grow more and more connected by the day. Many of us entered high school with a flip phone and graduated with the newest iPhone. We were born when you had to dial up the internet, and now answers to some of the toughest questions are on our fingertips in the literal blink of an eye. We were born into an age of terror, and have been surrounded by terror our entire lives. We have been witness to our world burning, our ice caps melting, and our forests dying. We have seen the economy crash, the banks fail, and the housing market collapse. And even as we sit here today, we sit in history as a once in a lifetime pandemic consumes our everyday lives. And we are witness to the ongoing struggle for racial justice in the United States. We have seen and experienced more in the last two decades than anyone could have imagined. All of this struggle has defined our generation, but I'm not sure it's a definition we all want to live by. It is our generation that can solve some of the world's toughest and darkest challenges. Now, as graduates, we are ready to face the world. We have been preparing for this day for years, and now we are ready to embark on new journeys. As some of you know, I'm an Eagle Scout, and in scouting, we were taught to leave every place we went better than we found it. And today, that is a message that I impart onto you. It is a challenge that I would like to impart onto you. Whether you go on to be a doctor, a lawyer, a nurse, a coach, a teacher, or whatever you decide to do, go out and make the world a better place than you found it. Do not be afraid to speak up. Do not be, be afraid to stand up for what is right. Do not be afraid to lead by example. We have all received a fantastic liberal arts education, and the advantage to that is that we have been exposed to knowledge broader than our own field of study. Chances are you sat in a class or two and said, why am I taking this class? It has nothing to do with my major, and I am too guilty of doing that. But as I moved further along, I came to the understanding that I'm taking this art class, this science class, or this yoga class to broaden my understanding. We have been provided an education inclusive of the arts, science, and history. 
we leave Rockford University with a broader understanding and a deeper appreciation of the world we collectively inhabit. Use this education to make this world a better place than you found it. So wherever you go from here, go with the knowledge that you have learned and aim to make an impact wherever you are. You all have the power to in inspire and change lives. And I believe each and every one of you can help change the world. And when you end up changing the world, don't forget to credit Rockford University in your success. For some of us, this university is where our journey of higher education began. For some of us, this is where our journey resumed. But Rockford University is not the end to our education, but the start of, to a world full of possibilities. Rockford University has given us the tools. Now use those tools and build a, worth, a world worth living in. I'm incredibly proud of each and every one of you, and I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you. And now for the moment we all have been waiting for. Would all graduates please stand? For those who have just received their undergraduate degrees, please join me in moving your tassel from the right side to the left side. Congratulations, class of 2021. You did it. Graduates, please remain standing for the benediction given by Professor Elaine Sharp to be followed by the clo closing comments by President Fulkemer. Let us pray. Source of all love and all life, we ask you to bless our graduates with wisdom, love, and faith. Foster in their hearts an ever-deepening respect for all your creation and the strength to challenge injustice. Give them a quick concern for their neighbor while understanding that service is the key to a meaningful life. May they have the courage to look deeply and honestly into the hearts of others, for that is where they will find the highest good. May they learn to risk the kind of love that brings life into this world. Divine Creator, keep our graduates focused on making a life rather than a living, so that throughout their life's journey, the depth of their character will be measured by the size of their hearts. Help them to know that they are never truly isolated, for they have deep roots with their personal families, friends, and their Rockford University family, whose door is always open to welcome them home. And now, may the God of many names bless you this day and all of our days to come. Amen. Thank you, Professor Sharp. Graduates, please remain standing. It is now time to formally conclude our celebration with two unique and time-honored traditions, our bell and our song. This bell first belonged to Rockford Female Seminary's first president, Anna Peck Sill, who would walk the halls of the campus and ring this bell at the beginning and end of each school day. Her spirit is still with us as her bell and her tradition has carried on since the very beginnings. Today, we carry on Anna Pexil's tradition and ring this bell not only when students enter as first year students at orientation, but also at the close of this chapter in their lives, transitioning from Rockford University students to proud Rockford University alumni. That bell is 175 years old. Class of 2021, we are all tremendously proud of you and will watch with great anticipation as you commence your lives as graduates of Rockford University. And I just wanna say how proud I am of each and every one of you. You have made it through the most difficult uh, year in the, in the history of uh, those of us who are alive and uh, you made it, you're resilient, and I'm so proud of you, and I can't wait to see what you accomplish. Graduates, would you please turn and face the audience? 
Family and friends, I present to you the class of 2021. You can turn around if you'd like. And now for the singing of our institutional song, Professor Tim Adams, will you please lead, please lead us in the singing of the Decus? Guests, would you please stand and remain at your seats after we finish singing as the platform party, faculty, and graduates recess out of the stadium. Our strong bond shall ne'er be broken, formed at dear are you. Take we now a pledge unspoken, to thee will be true. Rockford decus et veritas, deep graven on each heart, will be fond, unwavering, true, till we from life must part. 